Good morning and welcome to the pre Hari Raya special of Sense of Science, beam live on Astro Awani, your premier satellite service. In today's episode of Sense of Science, our experts will be taking on the topic of yet another festivity in relative isolation. I'm feeling a little vulnerable right now without my two rocks. Um, Thansri, Dr. Jamila Makot is in an emergency meeting with the National Security Council, while Professor Dr. Adiba Kamal Zaman is also being consulted on COVID matters as we speak. Both will join us later in the show. It is sobering that for nine weeks, the women have been able to keep this date and been present for every session. But as Dr. Jamila said to me over text, emphasize that we are facing a very critical point right now. So in the spirit of solidarity, the show must go on. Selamat pagi dan selamat datang ke sesi khas Praraya Sense with Science. Um, today, we are very happy to be with the team who has brought us um, weeks of very secure information, very correct information. And we have with us a very special friend, uh, Dr. Yang YY, who is a clinical psychologist. Uh, now, YY, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your career and uh, why you feel compelled to be with us today. Wow. Okay. How much time do I have? As much time as you want. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for inviting me. It is really a, a pleasure. Uh, and also an honor yeah, to be spending this morning with all of you. And I think it's an important um, opportunity yeah, so that I can actually share um, some of the knowledge, but also experiences that we have throughout this last one and a half years. Yeah, it's actually started much more earlier than the MCO. And now we are actually in the midst of it rather than at the end of it. Yeah, so... Um, a little bit about myself, uh, I'm currently a senior lecturer in uh, the pediatrics department of UKM. Um, I go a long way back with uh, Tan Sri Dr. Jamila uh, and also uh, some part of it, Karen was uh, in that process. Uh, Dr. Jim was uh, there when I actually joined Mercy as a volunteer, uh, right out of my uh, uh, uni days. Yeah, just fresh. Yeah, And um, I think it's... Uh, uh, a passion of mine to actually uh, work with definitely the children and adolescents, uh, young people. Uh, but of course, in our work, uh, we deal with adults and also uh, multi-generational care because family, family is actually a core um, focus. Yeah, I think uh, as an Asian uh, myself, uh, you know, with uh, extended family, multi-generational ties, I think Karen is going to go into it. We are always connected, yeah, either personally or professionally, working with the whole family. And it's important that now when we're actually talking about uh, how things are, we are not just talking about a person as an individual. Because sometimes when we talk about science, we might actually focus on one person without understanding the network or the situation that they are in. With that consideration, then we might be able to make better uh, decisions. And I think that's why Raya is not about one person. It's not about that. You really have to think about how this person would actually go through and survive it Yeah, with or without their family. And we know when we talk about family, we are not talking about two, four people. We are talking about you know the extended family, uh, the kind of traditions that you're going through with different people, you know, at the different kampongs, yeah, how it's going to be. So, so look forward to discuss some of that. Absolutely. So, salam semua. Kami hanya seminggu dari Hari Raya Aidilfitri. Seperti perayaan upama lain tahun lalu, perayaan Aidilfitri kelihatan sedikit sunyi sekali lagi tahun ini. Walaupun pihak pemerintah melakukan semua yang mungkin, untuk memastikan pelaksanaan program vaksinasi yang selamat dan cepat, orang ramai diingatkan berulang-ulang kali bahawa kelakuan kami yang akan membantu menurunkan jumlah kes-kes COVID. And for many doctors, Malaysians and medical personnel, this Hari Raya will be yet another missed opportunity to reunite with friends and family. Um, I know that Professor Adiba has 
consistently mentioned she's seen an increasing number of COVID cases at PPUM. And she can tell you that this fourth wave will stress our health services tremendously. So while the team at Sense of Science understand the yearning to be with extended family and friends, um, Dr. Jamila, Professor Adiba, and I appeal to each one of you to put the safety of the nation first and scale back the Hari Raya celebrations. We understand how difficult this will be. And today on the show, our two special guests will give us a point of view on celebrating in the time of pandemic. Um, as I said, Dr. Yang Wai Wai, who we just heard, um, is an old friend from the days of Mercy Malaysia, and she's she's been amazing. Tetamu uh, kami hari ini adalah pakar psikologi Dr. Yang Wai Wai yang telah saya kenal dengan Dr. Jamila sejak masa Mercy Malaysia. Dr. Yang telah bertugas dalam bidang kesihatan mental terutamanya pada masa-masa krisis. Dan kami sangat gembira dapat membawa beliau di sini bersama kami. Turut bersama hari ini ialah rakan muda saya, Nuran Hazika. Seorang pelajar berusia 13 tahun dari SNK, Taman C. Yang akan merayakan hari raya yang agak berbeza sekali lagi tahun ini. ya. So, uh, over to you, Nuram. You have a question. Um, Dr. Yang, adakah remaja seperti saya berisiko kesihatan mental yang buruk pada masa-masa seperti ini? Pola dibuka semula pada bulan Mac. Tapi sejak dulu minggu ke belakangan ini, saya ditahan di rumah kerana ibu bimbang dengan peningkatan jumlah kes COVID di sekolah. Saya tidak rasa terlalu teruk kerana saya biasa belajar secara online. Saya ingin tahu dari sudut pandangan profesional, Bagaimana menjauhkan diri dari interaksi sekolah yang normal boleh memberi kesan negatif kepada sebilangan pelajar? Ah, okey bagus Nuran. Ah, apa yang Nuran tanya tu saya rasa banyak ya yeah, kawan-kawan yang di luar sana juga berfikir demikianlah. Ah, sebab bila kita kata sekolah ni dia sebahagian besar dari hidup remaja seperti Nuran ni, ah, sekolah itu penting more than half mungkin eh, uh, hidup adalah ber, se, apa, berkita pada sekolah sama ada daripada segi pembelajaran dia proses pembelajaran ataupun daripada segi uh, rakan sebaya daripada sekolah juga jadi bila kita kata sekolah ditutup itu bukan sahaja kelas-kelas pembelajaran itu uh, tapi juga uh, peluang untuk berjumpa dengan kawan-kawan ataupun peluang untuk menjalankan aktiviti core curriculum Ah, yang setakat ini kebanyakan sekolah telah hentikan sejak daripada tahun lepas. Ah, yang kita nampak ialah ah, bila COVID ini berlangsung, ah, kita sibuk tekankan tentang oh mata pelajaran mana, silibus mana, kurikulum mana yang tak siap lagi kan. Ah, lepas tu ada yang kejar pula ah, kejar ah, silibus. Memang kesian tu kepada ah, para guru dan juga pelajar. Ah, tapi sebenarnya bila kita Kenangan-kenangan kita lah kalau kita kata uh, yang dewasa ini kan Karen ke uh, ataupun kalau uh, Tan Sri ada di sini, uh, Prof. Adiba ada di sini. Mereka akan cakap apa yang mereka ingat di sekolah bukan tentang pelajaran saja, Tapi yang penting adalah uh, aktiviti kesukanan ke ataupun uh, kelab kak dan persatuan. Uh, betul tak Nuran? Betul. betul. Ha, kalau Nuran dapat pilihan apa yang Nuran akan buat? Uh, tak join tak kegiatan-kegiatan tersebut? Oh, join join. Miss tak kalau tak ada? Of course lah. Of course kan. Ah, tapi kita nampak tak ada penekanan pun terhadap ke, ke, keperluan tersebut. Dan kita sebenarnya bila kita kata kesihatan mental ni dia merangkumi banyak aspek. Uh, itu adalah salah satu contohnya mengapa penting ya kita sebagai seorang remaja yang sedang uh, apa bukan saja remaja anak-anak yang uh, muda lagi muda sekolah rendah pun sama juga perlu ada uh, kita kata balance ya terhadap uh, kehidupan kita kita perlu belajar kita perlu bersukan beriadah dan berkawan Ah, Itu sebab mengapa bila kita kata kesan negatif sekolah ini Kita kena fikirkan ah, mengapa terjadi ah, Jadi ah, setakat ni kalau biasa ada kelas kan ah, Kelas Zoom ni dapat tak nak berbual dengan kawan-kawan? Dapat sikit je tak macam sekolah datang sekolah biasa Hmm, Biasa bual tu macam mana? Face to face ke you all chat dekat uh, box tu? Um, 
Walau sewaktu sebelum cikgu masuk uh, face to face lah. Ah, tapi kurang juga lah kan sebab bila uh, PDPR ni kan uh, online kelas tu bukan dengan kawan kita je semua orang ada kat sana. Uh, jadi you rendah lah kan nak nak apa apa cakap. Uh, jadi itu adalah uh, apa yang kita kata bila it, ber, uh, sekolah ini uh, bercuti ataupun beralih kepada online Uh, kekurangan-kekurangan yang berlaku lah dan kita tahu untuk perkembangan normal ataupun perkembangan yang uh, holistik uh, kita memerlukan semua aspek tersebut jadi ada kesan jangka masa pendek ni mungkin orang just rasa ala tak dapat lah peluang tu tak ada tapi jangka masa panjang kalau kita terus begitu tidak me mencari alternatif lah uh, walaupun kita kata tak dapat tak adalah kita tak ada alternatif cuma bila kita tak fikir atau kita tak pentingkan jadi benda tu tak buatlah. Faham tak? Ke tak setuju? Ha, nak tanya. Ni nak panggil aunty ke nak panggil apa? Aunty lah. Nak bagi mesra sikit lah takut nanti Nuran takut dengan aunty. Oh. Uh, Why I have a question here. So you answered Nuran very very nicely about uh, school going children. What about the psychological impact and the impact on growth, emotional growth as well as psychosocial growth for toddlers, for little kids who, whose preschools have shut, whose nurseries have shut, what kind of implications are we or may we see from uh, this change in dynamics for little kids, the types, and, and then what can their parents do to help them get through this? Because my, my godson is Uh, he's tiny. He's only four, you know. And uh, but he he misses going to school. He misses, and he doesn't understand why he can't go to school. He doesn't understand why he can't short share his chocolate fingers with his friends. And uh, his mother is having a very rough time trying to explain this. How would you advise uh, the mother of a toddler or a preschooler to deal with issues like this? Okay, so uh, Nuran kita sambung nanti. So balik pada Auntie Karen pula sekarang kan. Eh? Okay, um, I think it's, it's interesting ones to start thinking about like, oh, it affects the um, adolescents in school this way. How about the younger ones? And it's very important that we look at the overall developmental milestones in children. Because in a normal situation, certain things would ha happen automatically and we don't even realize that. So now you get a chance to actually look at the situation. You have young kids who in, in their natural uh, or, or when uh, MCO free time, even with the pandemic, some of them were able to actually resume certain normality uh, and certain activities. And very, very correct in the sense that how do you explain it to a four-year-old that you can't go to school because these things have happened? Uh, short answer to that, yes, you can, but not in a way that other people can actually uh, follow. Okay, we got. Oh my gosh, we have Professor Ariba. She's back. Oh my goodness. Hello. Sorry, everyone. I just came off from, from another meeting. <laughs> oh, hi, uh, Karen. It's very good to see you. Uh, I'm going to save the questions uh, for you uh, for a little bit later, Prof. Uh, Yvonne mm -hmm. was just speaking about how to explain to a preschooler uh, about why he or she can't go to, to nursery and speak uh, and play with his or her friends. So please continue, Yvonne. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, um, when it first happened, I think last year there were actually very limited resources, so it was very difficult. But right now they where there are actually a lot of resources in terms of pictorial cartoons and things like that that makes things easier for young children to actually follow. I mean, I look at my nephew and nieces. Um, they were sad to miss school initially and great to actually have more time at home and do their own things and enjoy themselves. And over time, they did get bored because it's like, oh, I would prefer going to school where there's actually different activities all the time. Parents are too tired to give them different activities all the time. Yeah. So when, when these kind of changes happen, that they actually homebound, that's when they, the parents or the adults, if their parents are not around, you need to actually rely on other adults to actually provide that kind of routine uh, in their days. It's like, okay, these are the activities that we'll be going through. Maybe not as intense or uh, as, as uh, interesting as what's going on. Uh, some of them did have tried um, 
going online with some of my kids or his young kids. Uh, my three-year-old nephew could not even sit down for five minutes. I think we have to be realistic. It doesn't mean that when you go online, everyone can go online by yeah. pushing or stressing parents out because I know so many of the stressing my colleagues, uh, uh, my, my family members, and also yeah, uh, my, the patients, uh, parents who come in and they are stressed because there's this all this demand on them to try to follow what the center have actually set up, uh, schools have set up. And we always talk to them about, give yourself a break, allow yourself to actually not do everything perfectly as long as you know what is actually the focus here. Because I think sometimes people need that permission, permission to not uh, do like, uh, you know, all the journalists around us, right? To, to let you know that, you know, what is the need of your family? And this, this go back to what I said earlier. The family is important to actually support everyone. Yeah, to make sure that, okay, how can we function as a family and go through this together? Because if your parents are stressed out with work and stressed out trying to actually sort the kid up for their centers or schools, the child's development is actually not the priority here. I mean, the child's mental health, you know, are they actually growing well? Are they eating well? Are they actually able to go through their days, enjoy their days? Yeah, so I think that's uh, what we talk about when we focus on the younger children. I love that. That makes so much sense. And I love what you say about allowing parents, giving parents permission not to be perfect, you know, not to always chase the status quo. And it's, it's wonderful to hear that. And uh, just a very quick side uh, to this again, uh, YY, what about children who are on the spectrum, children who are autistic or, you know, who have Asperger's? How is uh, this kind of forced isolation impacting on their uh, interpersonal development as as well as their mental health. Can you just give us a broad uh, overview of that? So with special needs children, I mean, the idea is that they might actually have very different needs than us and why we would actually have an individualized uh, intervention plan for each of them. Because it's not what you and I decide or, or think about what their need is. Um, what you mentioned just now, for example, the kids on the spectrum, um, we have some of them who actually did better with really? MCO. Yes, yes, because uh, some of them had difficulty managing too much demand in their uh, environment. So when they're actually at home, they get to actually follow their own pace and they're actually in an environment which they are actually in control. So uh, we have kids that actually uh, increase or have uh, actually... Um, yeah, yeah, increasing their language development from actually having uh, difficulty expressing themselves, able to actually read better because they are now in hands of um, more regular things that they're actually doing at home and just focusing on the things that they want to do or need to do rather than trying to, again, to actually run after or, or kerja lah, kerja silipus, right? Yeah, in that sense. So we do actually have kids that actually did better and it actually helps parents to understand, oh, actually my kids would benefit or prosper in an environment where it's actually uh, smaller groups or one-to-one -one teaching. Yeah, so it did actually help some of them. And then we also have another group of kids who really cannot stand being uh, held up at home only because they're used to the routine to be going to certain places that they actually want to. It could be the uh, gym that they actually attend, the OT sessions that they're attending. And that kind of routine when it's actually disturbed it's very difficult for them to actually find a rhythm to that. And that's why when, when announcements are actually ad hoc or there's actually no, not clear uh, communication, these are the kids to, that would actually um, suffer from that lack of uh, understanding because the teachers are unable to support them, the parents are unable to support them because the adults are actually trying to settle themselves. Correct. Yeah. Very true. Nuran, uh, nenek dengan atuk Nuran dekat Pahang kan? Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Um, Nuran, uh, last year Nuran tak balik ke Pahang kan beraya? Uh -uh, tak balik. Tak balik kan? Uh, rindu tak? Uh, kalau cakap tak rindu tipu lah kan. Tapi uh, nak buat macam ni tak boleh nak balik. Hmm. So you have a question for Dr. Dr. Yang. You nak tanya pasal rindu raya dengan datuk dengan nenek? Uh, saya rindu merayakan raya dengan datuk dan nenek. Mereka tidak celik komputer. Kami tak kembali ke Pahang selama setahun dan saya bimbang. 
bimbangkan kesihatan mental Datuk dan nenek saya. Bagaimana saya dapat memastikan bahawa kesihatan mental mereka okey Datuk Yang? Hmm. So Nuran, boleh saya tanya uh, sebab Nuran cakap mereka tidak celik komputer, macam mana Nuran berhubung mereka dalam setahun ni? Uh, kadang-kadang chat ataupun video call ah uh, macam tu. Uh, so sekurang-kurangnya mereka boleh chat dengan buat video call? Hmm. Hmm, okay bagus. Uh, so um, Contoh dalam situasi ini ialah kadang-kadang kita tak ada uh, kemudahan ya uh, ada internet ke ataupun kadang-kadang reception lah uh, baru semalam uh, kawan saya beritahu uh, mak bapak dia di Johor kan dulu sebelum ni mereka tak ada masalah untuk berhubung tapi sekarang ni connection pun tak dapat ah uh, jadi kalau mereka nak berhubung dengan orang tua di kampung Uh, mak dia sebenarnya kena keluar dari kampung tu uh, pergi kampung sebelah uh, untuk mencari line ah uh, itu yang kita dengarlah ah uh, jadi kadang-kadang memang kita nak bantu susah sebab physically kita tak ada ah uh, uh, datuk dengan nenek tinggal sendiri ke atau dengan ahli keluarga yang lain ada tinggal dengan anak sulung keluarga belah mak Ah, so ada juga uh, orang-orang di sekitar mereka dan kadang-kadang jiran pun ada mm. Mm. Ah, Jadi bila kita berjauhan dengan adik keluarga memang rasa rindu, sayang Sebab kita sayang pada mereka lagi rindu lah ah, Dan bila time-time special macam ni kalau raya nanti ah, Biasanya apa yang kita akan buat? Kita akan balik kampung, so biasanya persediaan kampung tu pun dah apa, meriah. Belum lagi raya kan, ah, tapi uh, persediaan bila kita nak buat sambutan itu pun dah menceriakan. Sebab itu kita berkumpul bersama-sama dan membuat aktiviti bersama-sama lah. Jadi benda seperti itu juga yang Datuk Nenek ataupun orang tua kita uh, akan rindu. Uh, sebab dia rindu nak berjumpa dengan cucu dan uh, dengan anak-anak lah. Uh, so one is uh, you berhubung cara uh, teknikal apa komunikasi digital, uh, phone call ke voice call ke. Uh, tapi kadang-kadang boleh juga buat surprise dekat mereka. Uh, uh, boleh hantar kad. Sekarang ni dah tak ada orang post. Uh, tapi sebenarnya bila terima sesuatu yang boleh uh, orang tua ni dia tak tahu sikit. Tak tahu sekitu artinya dia kena pegang sesuatu, nampak sesuatu dia akan rasa lebih lain lah. Uh, generasi muda-muda ni digital tu mungkin dia dah cukup. Ah uh, tapi orang tu kalau kita nak ah uh, jadi bolehlah nak kirimkan sesuatu dekat mereka ke ah uh, sama ada uh, baju ke kain ke cookies uh, ataupun sekarang kalau dekat uh, KL uh, Klang Valley ni kita banyak buat grab kan. Uh, so saya tak pastilah dekat area Datuk Nenek tu apa yang ada uh, Kalau tak ada area apa perkhidmatan delivery pun uh, Kalau siapa-siapa yang menjual di sekitar kat sana Kita boleh pesan sebab uh, bila dia orang hantar tu ada uh, surprise uh, Ingat oh so bagusnya cucu aku ni ha, kan? Kita buat uh, So Nuran boleh juga hantar something yang Nuran buat Uh, kad ke ataupun uh, tak tahulah Nuran uh, ada uh, apa kita kata bakat uh, buat benda lain tu apa saja craft sebab sebenarnya uh, orang tua kita ni dia bukannya dia akan menilai oh benda ni kena kualiti uh, macam mana tapi yang penting ingatan tu oh cucu saya dia hantar uh, apa uh, khas kepada saya uh, kalau kalau biasanya kita nampak orang tua ni lepas tu dia akan bawa benda tu dia akan tunjuklah Ah, dengan orang tua kejiran ke ah, Ataupun apa tadi ah, ah, Pak Pak Su ke apa, Pak Long ya tadi Sama uh-huh. ah, kan oh, Tengok ni Nuran buat ah, Jadi itu antara ah, ah, Strategi-strategi yang Nuran boleh ah, Ambil ah, dan buat Sebab orang tua kita ni satu ah, Suara penting ah, ah, Tengok kalau kita dapat video chat tu Nampak rupa kita pun ah, penting ah, Tapi ada juga orang tua yang allergic ah, Kalau nenek saya kan saya call dia kan, dia akan cakap, hello, ada apa? Ada, ah, bye. Dia sebab dia tak suka. Ah, kita pula yang stres. Ah, dia, dia kan itu yang kita kata generasi yang lain, dia punya penggunaan ah, ah, teknologi dia lain. Walaupun ada, ah, benda tu ada je. Tapi dia sendiri tak selesa. Jadi kita cari apa yang mereka selesa lah. 
uh, untuk kita hantar. Uh, ada tak menjawab uh, soalan Nuran? Uh, ada, ada, ada. ada. <laughs> Nuran, saya uh, Dr. Adiba, maaf ya saya datang lambat sikit tadi sebab ada uh, uh, meeting lain sebelum ini. Saya, saya nak tanya sikit, sudah tentu kita semua kecewa ya tak dapat berhari raya dengan nenek, dengan atuk. Um, cuma saya nak Doktor nak tahu, Nuran faham tak kenapa kita terpaksa um, orang kata sacrifice lah tahun ini sekali lagi uh, tak berhari raya dengan nenek, dengan dengan atuk, dengan dengan uh, sepupu, dengan ini you know, macam macam kan? Kalau balik beraya di kampung kan seronok sebab ramai ramai uh, boleh bersama sama kan? Jadi kenapa? Ini tahun kedua kita terpaksa uh, sacrifice dan tak berhari raya. Hmm. Agaknya Nuran faham tak kenapa? Um, faham kot. Okey, cerita sikit. Uh, sebab uh, kan satu pasal pandemik. Lepas tu uh, saya nak... Terima. Yelah, kenapa, kenapa pandemik ini uh, menyekat kita daripada bersama-sama di hari raya? Kenapa kuman ni special sangat macam gitu? Uh, tak pak, yang tu tak faham kuih. Ah, uh, sebab tu kan kalau kalau kita faham, uh, doktor harap uh, kita tak rasa marah lah dekat uh, dekat kerajaan ke dekat sesiapa kerana tak tak benarkan kita bersama-sama di di hari mulia ni kan? Hmm. Jadi sebenarnya kuman COVID ni dan 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 doktor pun harap uh, nenek dengan atuk semua pun faham kenapa pentingnya kita tak bersama uh, di, di hari raya ni ya sebab kuman ni dia pandai dia dia bila dia menjangkiti uh, seseorang itu mungkin antara 50% daripada kita tak pun tahu yang kita ada uh, uh, you know uh, apa kita kata carry this virus ya mungkin orang pada satu masa uh, dijangkiti kuman ni jadi uh, insyaallah tidaklah tapi you know kalau kalau berlaku uh, kemungkinan tidak mendapat apa-apa kesan tu agak tinggi jadi dan uh, kuman ini kita uh, dia dia banyak di kawasan hidung dan mulut dan bila kita bercakap bila kita ketawa bila kita batuk ia senang merebak Uh, terutamanya di tempat-tempat yang tertutup. Jadi kalau kita pergi ke rumah uh, dah ramai-ramai dengan sepupu, dengan nenek, dengan uh, mak saudara, bapa saudara semua berpeluk-peluk, ia kita tak tahu yang kita ada kuman tu kan? Jadi kita peluk nenek, peluk atuk, peluk sama sendiri dah merebak daripada satu orang dah merebak kepada lima, enam, tujuh, lapan orang. Yang lima, enam, tujuh, lapan orang tu pergi open house dekat rumah uh, jiran sebelah pula. Pada hari ketiga, keempat, uh, bila kuman tu dah dah merebakkan, akan mulakan lagi satu kluster. Jadi itulah sebabnya kita nak melarang daripada uh, pertemuan uh, di, di hari raya ini. ya. Yeah. Dan mungkin uh, Nuran sebab Nuran uh, masih muda, sihat, kalau dapat kuman ini pun tak memberi kesan yang teruk. Tetapi bagi nenek, bagi atuk, bagi uh, pakcik dan makcik yang mungkin ada kencing manis uh, dan darah tinggi, uh, mereka lebih senang untuk mendapat jangkitan yang serius. Ya, sekarang ni doktor dah penat. Sahabat saya menjaga pesakit di pusat perubatan Universiti Melaya tiap-tiap hari kena buka lebih katil, lebih ICU ya. Sebab uh, mereka yang yang dijangkiti sekarang ini uh, ramai di kalangan uh, mereka yang berumur 60 tahun ke atas dan telah mendapat uh, jangkitan yang lebih uh, serius di tahap apa yang kita katakan kategori 3, 4 atau 5 yang memerlukan oksigen dan Um, sebilangan juga memerlukan uh, bantuan pernafasan. So kita mesti membuat sedaya upaya supaya, supaya jangkitan ini tidak merebak. Jadi sekali lagi kita terpaksa uh, 
sacrifice lah hari raya ini supaya kita dapat berhari raya bila kita dapat membendum uh, pandemik ini insya Allah pada hari 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 raya hari raya akan datang kita boleh bersama semula ya yeah? tapi agak penting kita memahami kenapa uh, you know kita kerajaan tidak membenarkan kita bersama sebab kalau tidak kita akan tidak mematuhi SOP itu ya uh, itu yang saya bimbang So sekarang Nuran, Nuran dah faham tak kenapa kita tak boleh bersama ni? Ah, dah faham. Okay. Well, having said that, Prof, I, we have to check in on you. How are you feeling and how have you been uh, shoring up? Are you, are you alright? And uh, have you been doing the crazy work around the clock thing with your... <laughs> no, I have not been doing... Thank you for asking. I am fine. Um, but, you know, uh, I think... My colleagues, many many of my colleagues, particularly in the public health sector, uh, in PKDs, and those really on the ground, but even colleagues at the hospital, at the acute hospital, hospital Sugabulo, my own hospitals, we we worried and we're very we, you know, exhausted. But you know, we will soldier on. Um, yes, we have to open more beds and more ICU beds, so because um, we are seeing. Uh, more and more cases, uh, and, and particularly more severe cases this time around. And um, because you know patients tend to uh, need hospitalization for a long time. For instance, at PPUM, we're getting between 20 to 25 new patients a day for COVID alone, um, and we're only discharging five. So you know there's there's going to be a, a, a it's going to clog up the system very very quickly. Yeah. That's so, that, that sounds horrible. Uh, YY, how do we, as uh, lay people, how do we support our frontliners, our medical professionals and our doctors and specialists? You know, in the early days of the pandemic in March last year, there was a huge outpouring of thank yous, a huge outpouring of gratitude and, and love and affection to the people on the front lines. Uh, that has changed. Uh, we've had a horrible turn where uh, our health workers now are not even being thought about, you know, uh, and you can see that by the number of people who are openly flouting SOPs. Uh, it's taxing our health system. It is taxing the very real humans behind the medical system. Um, so how, how do we as uh, lay people reach out to these medical professionals and tell them that you're not alone? So what uh, you're saying is that you would like to um, share or, or let, make it known that actually the effort uh, that the health professionals are actually engaging is actually appreciated. Absolutely. Okay, from the lay, lay people. Yeah, I think what, what was going on last year, people were receiving very uh, consistent messaging and therefore the images that they see, because a lot of the things about... Uh, going against a pandemic, which is actually, especially in this case, is a disease that you cannot see, is actually a war of perception as well. Yeah, uh, for people who have contact with the health professional, you can see that there are actually a lot of sharings online where they talk about uh, the, the thanks and like the effort, they see the sweat, uh, sweats actually dripping from the healthcare professionals. And, and how our beds, uh, all the quarantine process, uh, SOPs are going on. But if you're not in contact, like, you know, if you have not been directly affected, yeah, the, because there are lay people who actually understand that because they have been part of that process, uh, those that have actually gone into the quarantine center and things. So those that haven't seen it might not think that it's still going on because they don't see those visuals. I think uh, a few of the people who have seen the visuals from overseas um, uh, India are now starting to kind of like, oh, have a wake up call. It's like, hey, it's not over yet. Yeah. So of course, a lot of the, uh, previously, I think in the hospital, we receive a lot of parcels, uh, a lot of donations, but economy is also getting tighter because everybody has actually tried to pull through the last one year. Uh, so it's okay if it's just, 
uh, by cooperating. I think what Prof. Adiba have actually highlighted is actually uh, the importance of remembering that we are now actually in the pandemic and then with the MCO, why sometimes, yes, we would actually ease the SOP when the situation allowed, but the, it doesn't mean that it's actually one, one way. It's bi-directional, that the MCO can be tightened and eased as it is uh, as needed. So I think lay people, when they are actually aware of that and they are respectful, I think what happens is sometimes uh, some, some of the staff have actually shared also people um, from being very caring are starting to make uh, comments like, oh, but they're paid to do it. Yeah, oh. I think, yeah. This is the reality because if we don't listen to what is said on the road and then we can be in our own bubble as in like, oh, healthcare people are actually are doing wonderful job. Then we are not uh, hearing why lay people are actually having this, this kind of response uh, to, to uh, the healthcare professionals because they see that they are suffering and they are not getting the support that they needed. So it creates this gap, yeah? That, that we are uh, seeing right now. So it's actually very important that, you know, within the lay people that you can actually share uh, uh, with your family members, with your colleagues about like, you know, how we are actually part of this process and what we can actually do, because that's actually, you know, we're indirectly, you're already helping the healthcare professionals and also uh, the, the frontliners actually, because previously when we talk about frontliners, uh, we actually have a very, uh, a narrow definition of who the frontliners are and they tend to be uh, the medical personnel. Uh, then after a while, that frontliners description uh, grow and grow and then there are many other people who are actually listed. So I think once that dilution happens, people start to actually um, equate different things to the work of the frontliners. Yeah, and I guess uh, it's important that uh, right now, I think when we're talking about sense of science, is actually what we are talking about. Who are the finalists that we're actually identifying here? And then actually from what Prof. Adiba is sharing is not just uh, the hospital staff, but it's also the staff that are working at the Pejabat Kesihatan, you know, uh, or for the outreach. People are actually out. You have the pictures of people who are actually dealing with uh, after hours at night. Yeah, it's ongoing. So although it's a quiet sacrifice for a lot of us because we are not going to put up everything on the social media, it's important that we share or what I think this platform is trying to do, send that message out. What are actually happening inside uh, our healthcare system? Absolutely. I think this is one of the reasons why it's so important to have somebody like uh, Professor Adiba with us because she's actually doing ward rounds. She's actually on the ground. She's not speaking from some academic ivory tower, you know, on a situation that she has no uh, no finger on the pulse of. And uh, that's that's very important. Uh, we have a question from uh, Instagram. Uh, why, why? Um, uh, this person wants to know, she has a nephew born during the quarantine. He was not exposed to other people. For a year, he lived only with his family and did not know other people existed. When the MCO was lifted, they took him out and he was in distress when he met strangers on the street. It scares him. How do we ease him into society? Yeah, I guess uh, this is something that we call you can actually do it gradually because sometimes we might actually just take them out and then into the public. Uh, there are also public space that are actually just a space without the people and then not crowds. And then one by one, the immediate family before you actually start actually going to different people at different times. One of the idea is that you want them to actually get used to actually my world is bigger than this, which usually happens, you know, when you actually have infant uh, going to your uh, toddlerhood, that's the development because you're starting to be mobile, then you're starting to move around, you start to discover your world. So that's actually a normal progression of development in a child in actually understanding and knowing. But if you have actually been at home, so that's your world. So when you go out of the door, then the world is opening up. Yeah, so you actually have to actually do it gradually, place by place, and then people by people, so that the child have a uh, uh, opportunity. Yeah, so you could actually do it within a, a session, but MCO you might actually be limited. 
Uh, so if it's in, in a situation where it's actually in the compound and you're just safe and you're still following the SOP, so you could actually introduce new area and then new person. So take your time. Don't go into the child's personal space immediately, but sort of like be around. Let the child be aware. So when the child is aware, the child starts paying attention, then give chance to the for the child to modulate or regulate their uh, uh, emotions and uh, uh, arousal, that's what we use. Arousal meanings that, you know, whether they get too excited, sometimes it because it's overwhelming. It might be a good thing, but it's overwhelming too much. Yeah, at a very short time. That's why they cannot cope. So you can actually do it slowly. Yeah, so provide uh, space and time so that the child recognize and then, okay, they can regulate. Make sure that you do it when they are calm so that, you know, when initially they're actually getting uh, arousal increased, meaning they get excited, you know, they get like, oh, what is this? It might, they, they've never seen it, so they don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. They just kind of like, oh, what is that? Yeah, then let them like, oh, okay, so this is actually uh, something that you can touch or something that you can make sounds, or, you know, if it's actually an environment. Or this person, like, look at the face first, and then you kind of like break through. Because a lot of time when you actually meet family, they want to carry the child and hold the child straight away. Yeah, um, and that is actually, can be quite confronting for the child to have someone who they don't know or have never seen because by, by nature of the relationship, we might say they're very close because it's actually, oh, it's my grandchild. But for the child, you have never been in my world. Yeah. So actually, that's what you can actually successfully do by easing it uh, bits by bits and introducing to different people. And it's important to do that because we know that in the first uh, 24 years or uh, 24 months of the child's life, at least two years, there's a lot of things that's happening to the brain in terms of what they're actually uh, recognizing, learning about the environment and relationship interaction. So even if you don't see the people in person, if you actually have FaceTime that is actually chatting, introduce the voice of that person, introduce the face of the person, so that when the person is in, uh, well, you see them in, in, in person, then it's not that big a shock for known people, close family members. I think a lot of time you worry more about close family members rather than uh, strangers in the street that the child gets scared of. Yeah, yeah. So I guess uh, parents also have to... Uh, slow down yeah because i think sometimes parents are going do, going uh, about their daily life so they might not uh, realize that although you are carrying the child but the child is getting a lot of input from the environment yeah in terms of the simulation fantastic thank you so much yy and this mm. question has to come from a teacher uh and this person and this is a big shout out for all the teachers who've had to once again go back to online learning so for chegu ibrahim for you know uh, for for uh, Juan Rafika, for all the other teachers in SKTM, as well as our tuition teachers, uh, Mr. Nawin uh, and Angeline. So what can we as teachers do when we see students start to lose interest in online classes? Tak hadir class, prestasi turun. Oh my gosh. Yes, I mean, this is actually the... We know the impact on our children and as the adults around the children, yeah, either in a career role or in a teaching role, you want to actually be able to provide. And even in the university, we have that difficulty, that challenge to actually engage our medical student long enough that they actually can actually see through rather than like go off. Yeah, so I think a lot of it comes to creativity. Yeah, and in understanding that how attention span in everyone, yeah, whether it's adults uh, or children, actually has a limit. So running a class without any breaks is not going to be helpful. So you need to actually modulate between like, you know, you're doing certain activities in the same topic, but certain different activities and you actually move from one that where it's actually uh, didactic, where it's actually teaching and then you kind of like have a quiz and then you have a forum, a discussion. So it has to be multi prong creativity in how you introduce. I know some, some teachers' feedback was, it takes a lot of time. I agree because it takes a lot from us if we want to remain as effective as a teacher, as actually yeah, an educator. Um, and I guess it's important for our employers uh, or you know the people above uh, us to recognize that that you know in order to be as efficient and deliver things, we need to actually prepare the material. So one of the things that I have actually uh, discovered is. Uh, using my students, because we do teach right in the uni, as part of that team. They are my uh, uh, teaching aides as well. 
Because when they actually develop materials with me and then they actually use it, so they benefit twofold. They learn about the materials that they're developing. So of course, with younger children, sometimes they're a bit challenging. That's why we have a reliance on parents to actually come in uh, of course, if it's actually a parents who only have one child, they could actually dedicate that uh, time and effort to do it. But when parents have a lot of other, like, you know, two, three kids, yeah, four, five, it's very difficult. Yeah, it, is. So. it definitely is. Um, you know, I, uh, Nuran still thinks that it's important that Hari Raya is celebrated in a, in a small way. And I think she has a question for Professor Ajiba. Silaka Nuran. Um. Saya rasa ini penting untuk menambah raya sekurang-kurangnya dengan skala yang kecil untuk menandakan berakhirnya bulan Ramadan dan bersyukur atas keberkatan bulan suci. Bagaimana kita dapat menyambut hari raya dengan selamat? Okay, so um, kita boleh berhad, masih boleh berhari raya tetapi di dalam apa yang kita katakan bubble ya jadi macam dalam keluarga orang berapa orang? Uh, lima. Lima. Jadi dalam lima-lima tu masih boleh berhari raya. Tapi dengan atuk yang di kampung tu, kita boleh cuba. Atuk pandai pakai Zoom tak? Pandai pakai uh, telefon tak? Pandai, pandai pakai WhatsApp tak? FaceTime? Video call boleh lah. Ha, video call pun dah cukup kan? Jadi um, kita kita mesti uh, you know buat masa ini sebab uh, kadar jangkitan agak tinggi. Kita mesti bersama dalam orang yang serumah saja cuba jangan cuba jangan uh, you know berjumpa dengan ramai orang lain di luar daripada bubble itu sebab uh, kemungkinan uh, dijangkiti akan lebih uh, meningkat ya yeah? so uh, berhari, berhari raya bersama-sama dalam sekeluarga bubble dan mereka yang yang jauh tu kita mesti gunakan teknologi lah untuk buat masa ini boleh Oh, Prof Adiba, uh, macam know, macam sorry sorry Karen ingat no tak worries. Karen masa, masa uh, Chinese New Year hari tu kita um, galakkan supaya angpau dihantar melalui uh, uh, apa electronic banking ya so Nuran uh, duit raya boleh minta uh, uh, macam macam hantar melalui e banking juga. <laughs> uh, Duran, uh, minta minta saudara saudari also send kepada uh, Auntie Karen dengan Auntie Wai Wai ya. Uh, uh, money kan? Boleh. I give you my account nanti. <laughs> Prof, maybe you want to speak a little bit on masking protocols and pre and post eating and keeping distance at the dining table. Hmm. Mm. Ya yeah, betul betul. So uh, sebenarnya kan sekarang kita tahu. Uh, kuman covid ni dia merebak melalui udara. Jadi uh, adalah penting bila kita ada di dalam rumah supaya membuka sebanyak uh, tingkap dan uh, pintu uh, sebaik-baiknya ataupun kalau nak berhari raya kalau tak panas sangatlah atau tak hujan uh, kita berhari raya di luar. Ya yeah, itu satu. Jika kita di dalam sebaik-baiknya kalau uh, ad- ada lebih daripada ada orang yang you know datang dan bukan uh, dari keluarga um, walaupun tidak dibenarkan tapi uh, ada kemungkinan you know jiran sebelah nak datang berhari raya dan cepat-cepat pakai penutup muka terutamanya jika ber, bila berada di dalam rumah dan meminta uh, jiran itu juga uh, memakai penutup muka dan of course you know mencuci tangan dan sebagainya dan me- me- mementingkan uh, jarak tu. Okay, the, the usual protocols apply stronger than ever during this festive season. Uh, we ask, uh, as as a matter of course, from our frontliners, our very exhausted frontliners, to please stay in your bubbles, stay at home, celebrate at home with your families. If you cannot celebrate at home, please ensure that you meet in a place which has superior ventilation, do your gatherings outdoors, always keep apart, it's one meter still, so that means no salaman, you cannot kiss somebody's hand, you shouldn't be hugging, you shouldn't be exchanging kisses, air or otherwise. It is very, very important that you remain masked even when you are seated at the dining table. When you are going to eat, 
orang kalau nak makan kan, kalau ada kawan atau uh, saudara yang datang menziarahi, tolonglah. Uh, even while you're at the dining table, tolong keep your mask on sampai masa yang nak makan. Bila masa yang nak makan, tanggalkan mask tu, makan. Lepas makan, put back on the mask, okay? Very, very important. This is one of the ways that we can do our best to help our frontliners. Okay, so now we've got to ask also, uh, Nuran, kawan-kawan uh, kami di Instagram dan Facebook nak tahu, uh, what do you think about the new normal at school? Padahal uh, Nuran dan Eric kan dah, dah balik dalam uh, tiga bulan kan? Uh, normal baru kat sekolah, pakai masker, tak boleh duduk dekat-dekat uh, dengan rakan-rakan, tak boleh uh, pergi makan kat kantin, kan? Semua semua um, uh, aktiviti PJ, koko semua dibatalkan. Uh, apa pandangan Nuran uh, pada hal, pada uh, dengan situasi macam ni? Can you understand the new norm? Kita tidak akan dapat merayakan perayaan apa pun secara normal sehingga kita selamat melalui wabak ini. Masa saya di sekolah, saya mematuhi semua langkah berjaga-jaga. Ketika saya di luar sekolah, saya melihat orang dewasa memakai topeng di dagu dengan mendaftar masuk di aplikasi Masa Jatera dan berkerumun ke tempat yang tidak diperlu. Bagi pihak generasi saya, saya ingin memohon agar pihak dewasa mengingatkan bahawa apa yang anda lakukan sebagai individu akan memberi kesan kepada apa yang saya dan rakan saya alami. Harap bertanggungjawab. Sila pastikan semua SOP Hari Raya ini. Saya harap kali ini tahun depan saya dapat menjemput Tan Sri, Profesor dan Doktor yang ke rumah saya untuk Hari Raya Gemilang. Aduhai, you, Nuran, uh, hati saya sakitlah ni. Aunty Karen yang yang uh, ajak you datang ke Sense to Science and then pula you nak ajak Tan Sri, Profesor dan Doktor yang kepada rumah you. Aunty Karen tak payah makan ke? <laughs> Aduh, kecewa, kecewa. <laughs> But on a, or on a more, um, I, I think a more sober side, um, why, why? What do you think are the long-term psychological impacts for children growing up now, being always told to physically distance and always being put in boxes in schools? Definitely, there are a lot of concerns that we actually have right now. Yeah, but um, because there's not much evidence yet, we are collecting as we go or observing as we go. But we do want to take uh, precautions about like what could actually happen. That's why it's important to identify like where the issues are. And if everybody is aware of it and take a conscious, it's about awareness and taking the conscious uh, steps towards managing uh, these difficulties. Uh, we remember the earlier question said that because of the SOPs, parents have kept the child so much at home. Yeah, so there are actually implications. And uh, for example, I remember last year when I was on the crisis hotline for Mercy, uh, I had a phone call actually uh, from a Form 5 uh, students. Uh, she was so upset that she said this was supposed to be my year. You know how in school you actually work towards being the, the, the bosses at school, the senior yes. in school. So there are a lot of milestones or like, you know, important uh, time points in, in your journey as a person, as a student, uh, that is going to be lost. And that you can't really actually reclaim it back. Uh, easily or because it's, it's passed in the past already so so it would actually have an impact on them but I guess in any situation any in an event in the disasters or in an emergency yeah uh, which uh, the pandemic is part of understanding that all this present an opportunity uh, for the person is how you cope that matters it's not about like you know oh uh, COVID and COVID actually takes over your life or COVID is actually in in, uh, in control. You can take back that control. So it's important why I think uh, a lot of us are actually uh, very aware because I mean yesterday, just yesterday, I had I had a colleague who's actually in the private uh, center who actually had a 16-year-old girl who overdosed. You know, it's, stress is there. It's actually we do see it in our youngsters and it affect them uh, differently. So those who are already have difficulty to start with is going through a tougher time and I guess when you say you know how it's going to impact our children in the long run 
we are still running at the moment. So we have an opportunity to ensure that, you know, we could actually reduce or mitigate the risk for some of our kids. Uh, uh, prevention in a way, uh, what are the actually impact uh, that can actually uh, affect them and then making sure that they actually have the support system around. And I guess it's been really difficult because all of us are actually very stretched with the existing uh, patients because uh, I think in a lot of the clinics, what have happened is we had to actually reduce the number of patients that's coming in at any time. A lot of SOPs that is being for, uh, followed. So it's not just about COVID itself, but COVID is actually in parallel of our existing uh, health needs of our people. So I guess that's why uh, in the long run, you say what, what is going to happen. I don't actually have an answer for you, but we know that when going through any uh, difficulty emergency, uh, those at risk of developing uh, mental health issues would actually, uh, some of them uh, would develop. A lot of the things that have been reported in short term is actually depression, increased in depression and anxiety symptoms, anger. So a lot about that is about acceptance, about adjustment towards stress. So we have things in the psychiatry criteria or definition about adjustment disorder. But of course, moving on from there, you have a whole bunch of other mental health issues and problems that could actually occur. So with children, we say they are also resilient. Of course, although sometimes people talk a lot about disasters and disorders and pathology, we talk about resilient at the same time. So we all, all of us have a role to play. Like you say, you say uh, as laymen, what can we do? How do we support our, uh, our health workers? Because our health workers are not just health workers. They are also uh, children of someone. They are also parents of someone, sibling of someone. They actually have many roles. So by supporting all those other roles, that's what we can actually do at the same time. Not just the disease control, but also, you know, as a community, yeah, as Malaysian, caring, loving Malaysians, how we can actually come together and provide that support. I think uh, having an avenue to actually voice things out is important rather than to actually tell everybody everything is okay, but also to actually come. If you have any questions, I think very good. Nuran is showing us that you can ask. We want to listen to young people. We want to actually find out oh, what's troubling you. So what can we actually help you? Similarly with the elderly as well. Yeah. So I think communication channels and network at every different point. Because for a kid in their development is themselves, the people around them uh, at the same time. Awesome. If, if I could jump so in there, I think very, very excellent points, Wawai. I think um, it's it's really important for our viewers to understand that, you know, um, uh, specialties like yours, you know, providing mental health support for uh, children, for adolescents are so uh, precious and there's not enough of YYs uh, in, in the country. And then on top of uh, for for um, existing conditions, yeah. On top of that, we're adding, you know, uh, the COVID nineteen with all its uh, complexities. So the, the the system is very very stretched at the moment, and so we have to um, support each other. We we don't have to be a psychologist uh, necessarily, but just be there to be lit to listen. And most importantly, I think it's to be kind to one another. I think if there's nothing else that COVID, you know, is imploring us to do is to be kind to one another and to to look after each other and, um, you know, um, uh, because we've, we've got a long way to go uh, till we get to normality. Absolutely. Yeah. And talking about being kind to each other, one of the kindest people on the block and one of the most phenomenal women that I know, Dr. Jamila Mahmoud has just joined us uh, on the heels of her recently completed MKN meeting. Um, Tansri Jamila, thank you for joining us, progenitor of the series. Uh, can you give us a report on from on ground what's been happening and uh, can I go and walk my dog or not? <laughs> Hi, Karen. Hello, <laughs> everyone. Uh, the meeting is actually still ongoing. I stepped out just so because I cannot miss this special session and uh, to say hello to everyone, especially to Noran uh, again and also my beloved YY. Uh, I've known YY for so long. <laughs> um, I think that all of us need to be aware that the situation right now is critical. I'm sure Prof Adiba has mentioned. Uh, 
uh, as well, and that we all at individual level need to do something. Uh, there will be some announcements be, uh, made later today, which are going to be extremely important. But uh, suffice to say that you know, our health system is very quickly going to be overwhelmed if we don't at individual level, at family level, uh, all take some action, which means please stay at home. Don't go to crowded places, uh, you know, order in whatever, but stay at home. The variants are circulating and we need to be worried. Um, but you know, more than anything, you know, with this, this we're now close, close to Hari Raya, and you know, it is an important celebration for every one of us. And we've already had one year where we didn't really have a celebration. Of course, you know, for people like Nuran, uh, it, it's very important because young people love festivities, and so do we, right? All as adults. So I think the mental health pressures are real. Uh, and the mental health pressures on people who are working on the front lines are real. The mental health pressures to people like me are extremely high. Um, so I think we have to be kind and we have to be very self-aware that we are going through a, you know, a continuous stressful period for more than a year. And the strongest of human beings will still crack. Uh, and you know we need to be able to you know do our own emergency first aid to recognize our own uh, you know symptoms whether we're not sleeping well or we're not eating well we're irritable I'm certainly more irritable these days I usually can lie on you know one thousand WhatsApp a day but now I just tell people stop. I can't cope, right? So I think I think it's 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 real. The the pressure is mounting and it's real. So all I can say is that you know going outdoors is important, and going outdoors individually, taking exercise, taking a walk, and, you know really decompress, right, and, and, and breathe is going to be very important. And you will be very happy with the announcements later. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, Dr. Jim, your propensity of being able to say something without having to breach any kind of protocol, I tell you, uh, diplomat par excellence. So yeah. we nearly come to the end of the show today. We're so glad that you could at least see the tag end of it, Dr. Jim. Uh, let me thank Dr. Yang. Why, why, thank you. Seriously, thank you for your time. And you know, that craziness of trying to shift and what you told me about how your 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 parents, your dad. Yeah. Uh, I was just running around yesterday, today, get people swap and all, yeah, cleaning. Is this very new, real, not just for the people on the front line, but as a person like what uh, uh, Tan Sri said just now, that as an individual, your own self and your family, you have a responsibility to make sure that they follow. Because I realized, I was just sharing this with Karen earlier before the session start. We've been sharing a lot of things on WhatsApp. And I only found out yesterday that my mom misunderstood almost half of them or more. And my dad actually just looked for the videos. So anything that requires reading, he skipped through. So you, you then find out that, you know, we haven't been very effective. We haven't been efficient. So you might have uh, calling out to everybody who's listening or watching right now that you might have done some of this. It's a good time to go back, refresh and redo it because people after a certain time might forget or they they might not uh, be aware of what is the necessary things to do. So just go back, share the things and kind of like, you know, do uh, people uh, prepare for fire, have fire drill. So yeah, check that uh, and, and take care of yourself and your loved ones. And if you take care of the people around you, yeah, hopefully that uh, your loved ones who are far away, who's not with you will be taken care by the other people as well. So I think the care extends outside of our family as well. Yeah, so I guess, yeah, thanks for having me. That's wonderful. Thank you. Dr. Jim, any uh, Raya wishes for, for our listeners and our viewers? Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm going to allow me a, a few minutes to remind everyone that in Islam, there is something called makasit sharia, which means protect your faith, protect humanity. Uh, at the moment, with this uh, seriousness of the COVID-19, we need to protect humanity. We've done one month of fasting, that's we've protected our faith. Protecting humanity means making sure that people don't get infected. And if that means we have to stay at home, if that means we cannot celebrate with people we love, we are doing what is required uh, of us. And I think we have to re remind each other of that. 
that the biggest sacrifice we can make is when we sacrifice for others. So, you know, this has been an incredibly difficult journey for every one of us. But, you know, there is always hope. Get your vaccines. As soon as you get vaccinated, you reduce your risk of getting severe disease. And this is what we want. We don't want, you know, 500 people in ICU. Uh, I, I think we cannot afford that anymore. So I wish everyone who's watching, who's celebrating, to have a blessed end of Ramadan, but also to have a safe, uh, you know, Edo Fitri. Uh, for us at Sense with Science, it has been such a pleasure to be able to come together every week when we can on the weekends. Uh, and we hope that you will stay tuned because I think that these conversations are really important. Uh, you would have seen that a lot of it is based on science, on evidence. And we're very proud that it's all women and girls in science uh, who are, are taking the stage. Thank you very much, everyone. And Batin. Professor Adiba. <laughs> no, um, yeah, as, as someone working on the front lines, I implore all of you to help us uh, by not um, exposing yourself and, and getting yourselves infected. I think um, perhaps there's still an underappreciation of how serious uh, this illness can be. Um, and so, you know, uh, please, please uh, don't put yourselves at risk. I think a year on, we all know what to do um, so as not to get ourselves infected. So we, we really, um, you know, hope that everyone play their part. Alright, Nuran, ada apa-apa kata-kata terakhir yang Nuran ingin uh, kongsi dengan kami di Sense of Science atau dengan uh, penonton penonton kami di Astro? Uh, tak ada kot. Tak ada kot? Kenapa tak ada? Apa ni? At least wish orang selamat hari raya uh, lah. Eh, uh, <laughs> anti ni garang. <laughs> uh, Selamat Hari Raya. Ya. Yeah. Eh maaf Zahir dan Batu. Eh maaf. Selamat Hari Raya maaf Zahir dan Batu. This has been the 10th episode of Sense with Science. We thank Astro for the opportunity of helping us reach as many people as possible and also thank our friends at Pusat Perubatan Naluri for their part in this community engagement project. Kepada penonton uh, muslimin dan muslimat Semoga anda diberkati pada musim Idol Fitri yang akan datang. We'll get through this if we all pull together. Stay well, Malaysia, and thanks for watching Sense of Science. Thank you for being here. Bye.